Right, to expand on this uh, uh, topic, uh, as the Bafuken Queen Mother has now been laid to rest, I'm now joined by the University of the Free State Chancellor, Bonang Mohale, who has written a, an ode to Royal Bafuken Queen Mother, Semane Molotlehi. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. You wrote a beautiful ode to the Queen Mother, uh, speaking about how her story is one of many gallant warriors who fought for more than 100 years to retain title to the land her ancestors had occupied for hundreds of years. This was the introduction to your piece. Ma, thank you so much for having me. You felt and therefore knew that you were in the presence of dignified greatness. She never felt compelled to say a word, even though she had paid for the function. Today, we are hiring people in our companies that have been paid for by her scholarships, that have been counsel coached and held by the hand by her wise counsel. This is a woman that we reached out to when we had the first female president at the Black Management Forum, Menolita Fagude, and she stayed close to us. We knew her and her late husband from her struggled, struggle years. But she has taught us many things. Today, we apply those lessons. She's taught us that the personal is political, that when the flower does not bloom, you change the environment in which it grows, not the flower. She taught us that we need to build our own businesses rather than continuing to make babies and then send them to a different neighborhood to go on their knees and ask for a job from somebody else. The 350,000 a nation of Bafuke and an expanded family of the people of Northwest today are reaping the benefits of her selflessness, her elegance, her grace, her generosity of spirit. We know that girls learn by looking at the back of the heads of their mothers. There'll be many women today that are taking homage uh, and lessons from just her, her, her quietness and yet her forcefulness. We know that today when we are confronted uh, by this pandemic, um, she has taught us that a nation and indeed a society that values more the loss of the economy than the loss of lives does not need a virus. It is already sick. She wanted to make sure that those people that are suffering from HIV AIDS, those that are from child-headed households, those that wanted to go to university but don't have the wherewithal that they are indeed uh, catered for. She would sit in a room uh, without you even knowing. She would sit at the back uh, and keep absolutely quiet. Only when you went for tea, you realized that she was indeed in the room and you said, no, no, come and sit in front with us. Would you like to say something? And she would say, no, 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 I'm, I'm actually okay. So today, I think the willow tree has fallen. But uh, we are down on our knees, but her legacy is going to live on and we are not ever going to forget about her deeds because those are going to speak tons um, in front of her and after her. And we are going to be, continue to be motivated uh, and indeed uh, inspired by the life well lived, um, by touching us in a very special and meaning, meaningful way. Today, South Africa is benefiting from people that are highly capable, highly schooled, educated, and learned that have been paid for. Uh, through her tutelage, not just her money, but also her presence. Back to you. Well, um, as you speak um, about this uh, elegant uh, woman with uh, a generosity of spirit, humble and compassionate, we, we, we heard these words coming out of her obituary and the many uh, uh, um, you know, mourners who took to the podium at her funeral service this morning. What do you believe are some of the really powerful lessons that can be learned from uh, such a remarkable woman? So she didn't direct that the Bafukan people should be given antiretrovirals. 
she started a movement and she participated, rolled her sleeves to make sure that those that are beset by this virus are indeed emerging the other side. She was passionate about young people. She was passionate about women. But most importantly, she was passionate about education. She believed and she demonstrated beyond any shadow of doubt that when one steadily bends the midnight oil, one gains access to the domain of knowledge and wisdom, the world of meaning, the world that cannot be conquered without a persistent crusade. She demonstrated by being in our presence whilst we were going through fire, not from behind, but right by our side. Um, we held many training programs uh, on um, affirmative action and those people that were going to be in the forefront in making sure that as black people, we assume our rightful place in the wider community of nations. She would sit throughout those uh, training sessions. Sometimes it would be three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We leave only after lunch. We ran a program on good cooperative governance, how you separate ownership from control. She came at nine in the morning. She left at 1700 hours when all of us were leaving. I think her humility um, is going to be the beacon, the shining light. Uh, when we are lost um, and have lost our way, I think we'll remember um, the comfort and the warmth that we, we felt in her embrace and indeed in her bosom. And, and very lastly, before we let you go, um, in this uh, lovely piece that you've written, you say that uh, a succession of carpet baggers have tried to deprive the Bafugeng nation of your ancestral endowment to occupy land holding some of the richest deposits of platinum in the world. Um, yet we also heard during the funeral proceedings that this was a woman who stood for human rights. As you wrote uh, that sentence and uh, really uh, recalled the work and the strides that she made in protecting these resources, um, you know, what do you believe um, the impact of, of her perseverance had ha has had on the Northwest province? You see, there is no possession than land. So from the 1700s, 500 years ago, her tribe, her nation, her clan fought gallantly to preserve the land of the Bafukan people. At the time that we were having the 1913 Land Act, at the time that many Black people were forcibly removed from their land, and she, together with her people, said no. She is the biological mother to the 15th descendant, uh, Mulotlehi. They fought to ensure that they are not only the exception that are sitting on the richest deposits. Black people used to occupy 90% of South Africa's land. All the minerals that are found in this country as number one or number two used to be the bequest, the inheritance, the heritage of black people but they were forcibly removed. A lot of them resisted and indeed died. The Bafukan people triumphed. And that's why they could remember the humility. That's why they built real homes, stadia, cultural centers, um, educational facilities in the Northwest, um, economic activities, just to make sure that their people are not beggars, that they continue to get their self-worth and indeed their self-respect. So we will hold her in high esteem because even these days when the pandemic is wreaking havoc, we remember her warm words that when fisher women and fisher men can't go out to sea for whatever reason, they repair their nets. This is the time for us to repair our nets at a personal level, but also with our families and significant others and key relationships. Repair our nets in terms of our businesses. Repair our nets in terms of this South Africa of Holisasa, Nelson Mandela's dreams, the South Africa that we've been dreaming for, the South Africa that we've been praying for. Unfortunately, the people that call themselves our leaders today need to take a living example that what is required today more than anything else is this notion of ethical leadership, of absolute transparency, of this notion of final accountability to remember why we went to war while we struggled to improve the quality of lives of the majority of people and those that are less fortunate than ourselves. And we will know when we have succeeded because we have taken the bottom half 
and put them into the middle class. It is the poorest of the poor in Alexander, two kilometers across the richest square mile in Alexander that continue to live in servitude. And yet they have such a rich inheritance and they walk every day uh, to work in Centen and they don't feel a sense of belonging and indeed of ownership. Ndate Mohale, we thank you for your time and, uh, of course, uh, sharing your experiences uh, with uh, the Queen Mother.